Iov, Job. There was a man in the land of Uts, whose name was Iov. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 pairs of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, as well as a great number of servants, so that he was the wealthiest man in the east. It was the custom of his sons to give banquets, each on his set day in his own house, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. After a cycle of banquets, Iov would send for them to come and be consecrated. Then he would get up early in the morning and offer burnt offerings in each of them, because Iov said, My sons might have sinned and blasphemed God in their thoughts. This is what Iov did every time. It happened one day that the sons of God came to serve Adonai, and among them came the adversary, Satan. Adonai asked the adversary, Where are you coming from? The adversary answered Adonai, From roaming through the earth, wandering here and there. Adonai asked the adversary, Did you notice my servant Io? That there's no one like him on earth, a blameless, upright man who fears God and shuns evil? The adversary answered Adonai, It isn't for nothing that Io fears God. You've put a protection, a protective hedge around him, his house and everything he has. You've prospered his work and his livestock and spread out all over the land. If you reach out your hand and touch whatever he has, without doubt he'll curse you to your face. Adonai said to the adversary, Here, everything he has in your hands except that you are not to lay a finger on his person. Then the adversary went out from the presence of Adonai. One day, when Io's sons and daughters were eating and drinking in their oldest brother's house, a messenger came to him and said, The oxen were plowing, with the donkeys gazing near them. When a raiding party from Shva came and carried them off, they put the servants to the sword too, and I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another one came and said, Fire from God fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and all the servants, completely destroyed them, and I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another one came to say, They cast him, three bands of them, fell on the camels and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword too. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another one came and said, Your sons... And daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a strong wind blew in from over the desert. It struck the four corners of the house so that it fell on the young people. They are dead. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. Iov got up, tore his coat, shaved his head, fell down on the ground and worshipped. He said, Naked I came in from my mother's womb and naked I will return there. Adonai gave, Adonai took, Blessed be the name of Adonai. All this I have neither committed sin nor put blame on God. Another day came when the, three, when the sons of God came to serve Adonai. And among them came the adversary to serve Adonai. Adonai asked the adversary, Where are you coming from? The adversary answered Adonai, From roaming through the earth, wandering here and there. Adonai asked the adversary, did you notice, my servant Io, that there's none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil, that he still holds to his integrity, even though you provoked me to you provoked me against him to destroy him for no reason? The adversary answered Adonai, skin for skin. A person will give up everything he has to save his life. But if you reach out your hand and touch his flesh and bone without doubt, He'll curse you to your face. Adonai said to the adversary, Here, he is in your hands, except that you are to spare his life. Then the adversary went out from the presence of Adonai and struck Iov down horrible infection sores from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. He took a piece of a broken pot to scratch himself and sat down in the pile of ashes. His wife asked him, Why do you still hold to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he answered her, You're talking like a low-class woman. 
Are you to receive the good of God's hands, but reject the bad? In all this, Iov did not say one sinful word. Now when Iov's three friends heard of the calamities that had overwhelmed him, they all came. Each came from his own home. Eliphaz from Teman, Bildad from Shuach, and Sphor from Nama. They had agreed to meet together in order to come and offer him sympathy and comfort. When they saw him from a distance, they couldn't even recognize him. They wept aloud, tore their coats, and threw dust over their heads towards heaven. Then they sat down with him on the ground. For seven days and seven nights, no one spoke a word to him, because they saw how much he was suffering. At length, Iov broke the silence and caused the day of his birth. Iov said, Perish the day I was born, the night that said, A man conceived. May that day be darkness. May God on high not seek it. May no light shine on it. May gloom dark as death defile it. My cloud, may clouds settle on it. May it be terrified by its own blackness. As for the night, may thick darkness seize it. May it not be joined to the days of the year. May it not be numbered among the months. May that night be desolate. May no cry of joy be heard in it. May those who cause, may those who curse days curse it. Those who see curses could lose Levatan. May the stars in the twilight be dark. May it look for light, but get none. May it never see the shimmer of dawn. Because it didn't shut the doors of the womb when I was, when I was in the shield, my eyes from trouble. If I had been stillborn, if I had died at birth, had there been no knees to receive me or breast for me to suck, then I would be lying still in, in peace. I would have slept and be at rest, along with the kings and their earthly ad, ad, advisors who rebuilt the ruins for themselves, or with princes who had plenty of gold, who filled their houses with silver, or I could have been like a hidden, miscarried child that never saw light. There the wicked cease their raging. There the weary are at rest. Prisoners live at peace together without hearing a taskmaster's yells. Great and small alike are there, and the slave is free of his master. So why must light be given to the miserable and the life to the bitter of spirit? They long for death, but it never comes. They search for it more than for buried treasure when at last they find the grave. They are so happy they shout for joy. Why give light to a man who wanders blindly, whom God shuts in on every side? My sighing serves in a place of my food. My groans pour out in torment. For the thing I feared has overwhelmed me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quiet, no rest, and anguish keeps coming. 